Today we're making beef stock. The ideal cut of beef for stock is the shin or the shank, which is a cross section from the bottom of the leg with a big marrow bone surrounded by lots of meat packed with connective tissue. Connective tissue is what's responsible for the body of the stock or its gelatinous quality. And lots of meat is what's responsible for great flavor. But you remember all those bones I have left over from braising short ribs? It would be a shame to let them go to waste. So today, that's what I'll use instead of the shanks. Our first step is to brown the bones. Dry them thoroughly on paper towels. Dampness is the enemy of browning. The drier the meat, the better and faster it will brown. Arrange them on a shallow baking sheet in a single layer. Drizzle with a tiny bit of oil and rub all over. Place as close to the broiler as you can and cook until brown, about 5 to 7 minutes. Flip the bones and put back under the broiler until the second side browns. Like this. If the bones you're using were braised with your short ribs, you should skip this browning step. But I would recommend that you add the connective tissue that was surrounding the bones and little scraps of meat hiding in it to your stock. Otherwise, you won't get enough flavor or gelatin. Let's set a large pot of a high heat. Add a bit of oil, swirl to cover the bottom of the pot and wait for it to get hot. Then add one carrot, one celery stick, and one large onion, cut into big chunks. Cook without disturbing until the vegetables brown, three to five minutes. Stir and let them brown again. We are not looking for them to get tender. We just need intense browning for flavor. Add all the bones and scraps of meat and connective tissue. Add enough cold water to almost cover the bones. Add some water to the baking sheet and scrape up the brown bits. Pour them into the pot. Keep adding water until the bones are completely covered. Add a couple of bay leaves, sprigs of thyme, about a teaspoon of whole black peppercorns, and a tablespoon of tomato paste. Tuck them all in. Cover the pot, turn up the heat to high, and bring to a boil. As soon as you get the boil, uncover the pot, reduce the heat to low, and cook at the tiniest simmer for 8 to 12 hours, depending on what your schedule allows. No need to skim. All the scum will eventually cling to the bones and you'll be able to strain it out. By the time my stock was done, my kitchen was too dark to film, so let's reuse this training step from my chicken stock video. Let's set a colander over a large bowl and strain the stock. I prefer to use a ladle instead of dumping the whole pot into the colander. It might take a few more minutes, but it will save me from being splattered head to toe. Once you drain all the stock out of the colander, you can discard the chicken. At this point, I suggest you leave your stock alone for 15 minutes to let little impurities settle to the bottom. An 8-quart pot produces about 4 quarts of stock, so I'll strain it the second time through a fine mesh strainer into a 4-quart pot. Pour very slowly, not to disturb those impurities on the bottom of the pot. A coffee filter or paper towel would catch them. But that will make straining the stock extremely slow, so I prefer to simply pour carefully. See? There they are. Now we need to cool our stock to room temperature and refrigerate it overnight. Never ever put a big pot of hot stock into your fridge. This will raise the temperature of the whole fridge, compromising all your other food. To speed up the cooling process, you can take your pot of stock and put it into a clean sink filled with ice water. Degreasing beef stock after refrigeration is easy peasy since its fat solidifies completely. I just love how gelatinous it is. Nothing you can buy at a supermarket will ever look or taste like this. You can use the stock as is or boil it down to make it more compact and easier to freeze. For reduction in storage procedure, see my chicken stock video. 
For more cooking techniques, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.